I'm Brian Conley, director of Alive in Baghdad. Every week, we'll bring you up to date on our stories from Iraq. One of our most popular episodes, Baghdad is like Grand Theft Auto, was proposed by Omar Abdullah, our first regular correspondent. Omar, who is only 22, has continuously given me new insight into Iraqi youth culture. Omar has also introduced me to elements of American culture, such as the PlayStation Portable. In fact, he sent me an eBay URL for a PSP auction, asking that it be subtracted from his first paycheck. You know, there's no option to go outside. If I go outside, what I'm going to do there? There's just killing and blood and a lot of military... Uh, the initial idea for this show was to discuss the things young people do for entertainment in war-torn Iraq. Although we knew that many wealthier Iraqis played U.S. and Japanese video games, we hoped to provide a wider look at youth culture in Baghdad. However, we found that Iraqis were still afraid to be on camera, even discussing something as basic as having fun. Eventually, we decided to make it a simple story about one Iraqi who spends his time playing a variety of U.S. and Japanese video games. What is your favorite device for, for, for playing video games? My favorite device is uh, PlayStation 2. I like it so much because, uh, you, you know, <clears throat> the games that it had, it's so cool and you can find a lot of entertainment in all different kinds. Can you tell us a little bit about what do you what do you like exactly in each game? Uh, in each game, Final Fantasy. I played Final Fantasy. For the first Although there are other Iraqis like Rassam who spend their time playing video games and watching American movies, many more young Iraqis find themselves joining militias such as the Mehdi Army or even criminal gangs in order to make ends meet. This can be the only way to feed one's family under the current conditions in Baghdad. Still other youth turn to drugs and prostitution, which are believed to be on the rise in Iraq. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> the graphic is so cool, and the moves and the techniques, what he, have, what he had. Okay. You know about GTA? You know, uh, GTA exactly, it's like, um, you know, uh, it's like Baghdad, you know? You can steal every car you want, you can blow up cars, and... You know, you see a lot of police. According to the according to the to the to the time being in Baghdad, there's a there's a big problem in in providing the electricity into the homes. So yeah, can sure. you can you explain us a little bit? How do you provide electricity to your home? I, I have my own generator. Uh, so uh, when when the big generator is off, I turn on my own generator. I provide it when I go to the gas station to refuel the generator. Uh, you know, the gas station has a full line, so I spent there to, uh, to provide it myself. Despite Wassam taking measures to protect himself from sectarian violence, such as spending all of his time at home, the situation in Iraq has continued to deteriorate, and he was forced to flee his home in March. In fact, his home was very near a house of Saleh Mutlaq, an Iraqi parliament member, which was mistakenly bombed by American forces over the Christmas holidays last year. If you have an, a message you would like to say to the American people, what would you like to say? Mm, I think I'll tell them people are dying here and for no reason. Today, Wassam is living in Damascus, unsure of what's next, but still gaming.